What is up everyone? In this video, I am going to answer some feedback I got on my previous browser flow video. If you're not familiar with browser flow, it's a way to literally automate anything on your web, on the web. Um, and so it's like a no code tool for that. And in the previous video, um, there were some bugs in what I was doing. Browser flow got a little buggy and Gmail changed, but essentially the flow I was trying to do was send emails to all these um, all these emails based on like an event hypothetically that I would have um, and automate that. So essentially what I can do is I run this flow and it's going to like, uh, oh no, oh no. Okay. It worked for four to five times. Okay. Let's try it again. I think it's like going too fast for Gmail to catch on. There you go. There you go. And it's typing in all those emails and it's sending them to me and you can see them all here. Um, and now I'm going to go over just how I would use browser flow today. So to dive in, um, how I would do that flow now, this is very different than my first video, but essentially what I would do is run scripts. So within browser flow, you can run a JavaScript script, um, and that will essentially run on your browser. So it's a good way to like hold those scripts and run them, but these scripts you can also run. Um, directly within the browser. If you click inspect over here and then you click console, you really don't need like a lot of JavaScript knowledge, but I'm just going to show you how to find the selectors and build those scripts. Um, just because browser flow can get like pretty buggy at times. And so I, I would today, I would rather use like JavaScript as much as possible and then use partially like some of the other features of browser flow, like the Google sheets connector and use it just as a place to hold my scripts. And also like they have a feature called wait, which is like really helpful um, because otherwise it'll like time out or Gmail won't be fast enough for like how fast the JavaScript is running and it won't work. Um, so the way I would do it is if you go like and click inspect, be on Chrome, obviously if you're using browser flow, you probably need Chrome. Um, and it'll naturally go into the elements um, tab, go on the console tab. And over here, what I would do is you can just do like let and then let's call it button. Let's say we want to click a button. Let's say we want to click a tab in Gmail or a button. It doesn't matter. Well, let's call it say button, for example, in this case. So let button is just defining a variable. You're defining like something to hold data. If, you don't, if you're not familiar at all with JavaScript, you don't even need to be. You just literally go let button and we're going to say, what is button? And button is going to be document dot um, and we're going to do get, no, it's going to be like classifier, right? I'm forgetting my JavaScript, but document dot query selector. I'm going to show you an easier way to do it soon. Um, but you just type in query selector and you know, it'll autofill and then put brackets over there and then put in, um, whatever these things are called. <laughs> and then in here, what you want to put is the class of the element you want to click. Um, so this is just like pulling it from the HTML, just pulling the element and saying, okay, we have the button. And then afterwards we just define what we want to do with the button, whether we want to click, whether if it's an input, whether we want to type something. So let's just take the example of clicking the compose button. Um, so I have this set up. Now the next thing I want to do is go back to the elements um, tab, click on this thing here, this icon here, and then hover over the button you want to click. And you can see when I hover over it, like I have this green thing that's padding, but the blue is really what I want to click. And when I click on it, and you can see it's highlighted in blue here. And over here we can see class, and that's exactly what we want. So we want to get the class from here. And if you double click on the class, it will highlight it. And then just Command C or Control C if you're on Windows and paste it into here into there. And then before each, you can see there's a space between, there's like three text things here and there's a space in between them. Before each like block of text, like the TI, just put a dot and then put a dot before each one and get rid of the space between them. So I'm putting a dot between the L3 and I'm putting a space between it. And there you go, I'm getting rid of the space. And then there you go, we have that. Now click shift and enter, shift, enter. 
and it will take you down a line without running the code. And over here, um, all we have to do is literally click button dot click <clears throat> and then to open and close brackets. And if we run this, boom, it clicked the button for us. So this is how like JavaScript works. You're basically just like, give me the button and now what do you wanna do with it? In this case, they're like button, click it. And so it clicks it. Um, let's type something in the search bar using the same, the same uh, method. I want to exit. Okay, whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, let's <laughs> let's copy this and try this again. Let's call this let search bar um, equal document query selector. So let's get the query selector for the search bar. Okay, we want to get the input. If it's an input, you should see like that purple like input word because um, that will allow you to type. And we can see the class here and we can just double click on it. Control C, copy it, go back to the console, go back here, paste it in, put a dot in between, put a dot before the second block of text, get rid of the space. And here, instead of like clicking, we wanted to find a value. So you click value and then space. And then over here, let's do I don't know, wise. Let's try that. Let's see if this works. <laughs> okay, so in this case, um, one thing you can also do and one thing I was missing is that I was calling the classes um, are not necessarily unique. So what you can be doing is pulling the wrong thing when you do query selector and query selector will just put the first element that matches that class. Um, so that's why I specified before input. So it'll only put pull up inputs with the classes that are these, um, which gives me like the correct input, which is the search bar. And then in the search bar, I put dot value and wise bubbler, let's say one, two, three, and it will change the value in the search bar. Um, so that's how you can do it. And if you want to like figure out how to do this, let's look at, you can go to chat GPT um, and actually just type in like JavaScript, um, let's say, um, change an input, I don't know. And it will like change the value of an input and it will show you exactly how to do it. And it's kind of what I did. And this is how I've been learning how to do this stuff kind of better. Um, and document get element by ID or query selector, same thing. It's just a different way of getting, um, an item using JavaScript, there's many ways to do it, but I would just write these little scripts in the, and you can see the input dot value over here. You write these little scripts in the inspect editor um, in the console and then see if they work and then copy them over to browser flow. Um, so in browser flow, um, what you can do is just like, write a script and if you want to add, you can click run script and over here you can put in JavaScript. And so you can copy from here, like for example, let's say we want to copy this. You can copy the script you wrote. Whoa, uh, losing, losing everything here. There you go, here's the browser flow. I can paste that script that I wrote and I can run it as a command in browser flow. So if we go back, let's create a new flow. Let's call this test flow and let's add command and let's run script. And over here, let's run this code. Um, we can actually run this. Well, let's change the name. Yeah, wise bubbler, one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever. Um, uh, that's not what I wanted. And we can run this and you can see it will run on the browser and that's how you can build those. And the one thing I would do is sometimes it'll time out. So with mine, it was timing out. So you can build breaks in between. So you just click break and then you can run different scripts with breaks. Uh, no, not break. You want to do wait, wait. And usually I'll wait like 0 0.2 seconds um, and then run another script and then run script. That way you can combine the best of browser flow, but also just run JavaScript. And it's a good way to keep track of kind of these scripts 
that you have. Now browser flow is mostly free. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, let's go back to where we were. Yes, okay. So over here, you can see I just have the JavaScript and then I do wait and then I run another JavaScript, which is essentially just document query selector, getting the classes, getting the class, and then um, over here, changing the values. Um, for one of them, it sometimes text content is easier. Um, it's just another way you can use chat GPT to find exactly the way you want to change the value of an element. Or let's say, for example, you want to clear an input, you can just ask chat GPT. Um, and it's chat.openai.com, create account for free. It's all free. Um, how to clear an input on JavaScript. Let's see this, Let's see what they got. Okay. Okay, just put an empty string. Maybe there was like an easier way, but that's okay. That's also like, there you go. Now we can learn how to actually clear clear the search if we wanted to. Um, yeah, so that's how I would build in browser flow going forward is I would just use the scripting and then some of the utility elements and the connection to Google Sheets. In the previous video, I went over how you actually connect to Google Sheets and you can literally do any automation that JavaScript can, but you can also test it out directly on the browser before actually saving it um, to browser flow. So hopefully this helps. Um, and yeah, if you want more videos or have more questions on this topic, let me know.